This is the Creative Toolkit for Marketers, brought to you by VMG Studios, a series of videos where we take a look at different techniques and tricks and tips on how to make better videos and learn new stuff for video. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to compress and prepare your videos for distribution on platforms like Vimeo and YouTube using a tool called Handbrake. It's a very simple tool, it's free, it's available on OS X, on Windows, and on Linux, and uh, I'm gonna tell you how to do it today. So, let's get started. The tool that we're gonna be using for this is called Handbrake, and um, as of the time of this recording, the official website for this is handbrake.fr. Make sure that you uh, find the official website and do not download this off of like a random website. Um, the builds are going to be most up to date on the actual website, and there is a possibility, uh, however small, that you might get um, malware or a virus from downloading this from a website that's not the official website. So we have gone to handbrake.fr and we are going to uh, download Handbrake. Um, it has detected my system as Windows. And uh, if you want a different one, you can go to other platforms and grab it for the system that you are using. So let's download it for Windows. Some information you don't necessarily need to worry about. I have my EXE here. I'm gonna click on it and uh, then we're gonna install Handbrake. So let's go ahead and use the defaults that simple, fantastic. So now we can open Handbrake, and here it is. Let's go ahead and minimize Chrome. You have the option of doing a single file or a batch. Let's start with a single file, and then we'll probably look at batch stuff uh, later on. I'm gonna use that as an example of a video that we just finished for our Meet the Team series, um, and I just dragged it right into that window, and now I can start applying settings for it. The first thing that you wanna do is go over to the presets thing right here, and go to web, and take a look at these presets down here. So we have Vimeo YouTube HQ at various resolutions. We're gonna edit one of these because um, it, while it has uh, the resolutions that we want, it doesn't have the frame rate that we want. Um, we'll show you how to basically like get around this without having to think about it too much. Um, I know that this video is 1080p, so I'm gonna select this to start. And you can see that we have format MP4. That's good, all this is fine. And then we can see down here that um, this is what the output's gonna be like. So the next thing we wanna do is go to dimensions, which is the next tab over. In the dimensions tab, we have the ability to choose the size of our output video and some other settings. Here you can see that the source file is listed as 1920 by 1080 and it says PAR one out of one. You don't really need to worry about this that much. Um, PAR means pixel aspect ratio. Um, generally, for anything that you've shot on your phone or on almost any modern device, the pixel aspect ratio is gonna be one to one. Um, and then you can see that the source is 1920 by 1080. So that means that we probably wanna keep this at 1920 by 1080. You could change this if you are going to a uh, like a smaller format, like if you wanted to email this to someone, you could change this to a smaller size and it would make the file size smaller. But for things like YouTube and Vimeo and uh, most applications, we're gonna wanna keep this at its normal HD size. So in this case, that's 1920 by 1080. Good, and then we don't really need to worry about this other stuff here, so we're gonna go over to filters. You do have the option for some sharpening and denoising, if that's something that you feel like your video needs. You can experiment with these settings, um, but generally you don't need to mess with this section right here. Uh, D-Block will give you um, some control over maybe um, removing the artifacts from like really compressed video, so if that's an issue, you can try using the D-Block option there. And then, um, if for some reason that your video was recorded uh, like upside down, I don't know, it happens, and you haven't edited it in a, uh, a video editor program, you can hit flip and it will flip it for you, which is convenient. Next up is the video tab. When we chose this preset here, it automatically chose what it would consider the proper quality or bit rate for the medium that we are sending it to. And that's really important. Um, the way that bitrate works with compressed video is that uh, the bitrate is going to be adjusted based on um, the size and delivery platform that you're going for. So the uh, nice thing about using a preset to start with for the handbrake is that you don't need to worry about that if you choose the correct uh, size to start with, the dimensions of your video to start with. So since we've done that, we don't really need to worry about messing with this constant quality thing right here. Also keep in mind that when you do upload a video to YouTube, it's gonna make its own version of it too. So you could, you know, put this all the way up to what it calls placebo quality, which in this case is the highest quality. But um, when YouTube gets a hold of it, it's gonna re-encode it to what uh, format it wants. So um, it's not really gonna help you that much. So the settings that we do wanna play with here 
We want to take a look and make sure that this says H.264. H.264 is a codec or a uh, format of video that almost every uh, major uh, streaming video platform uses. So that was set when we chose this preset. Frame rate. Now, here's something that you might need to change. We chose the Vimeo YouTube HQ 1080p 60 preset because we knew that our video was 1080, but um, this video was not recorded in 60, uh, in 60 frames per second. So we're going to click on this and click same as source. So by changing this to same as source, we have uh, told Handbrake that we want to make sure that the output video has the same frame rate as our input video. Um, and there are a few cases where you wouldn't want this, but for the most part, you want this. And it will mean that your video will look as clean and as good as it was when you recorded it, as opposed to trying to subtract or add frames to your video. We can move down to where it says variable frame rate. Uh, we don't want that. We're gonna choose constant frame rate. Why Handbrake decides that variable frame rate is the way to go for uh, this particular preset, I'm not really sure, um, but generally you want constant frame rate. You don't want the frame rate to move around. If you ever have recorded a screen capture video, like a, a desktop screen capture video for something, and you bring it into your editor and you notice that the audio is uh, that you're trying to sync it to is sort of like drifting around, one of the things you can do is bring it into Handbrake and uh, just make sure all the settings are the same, except for this right here, changing it to constant frame rate, and then re-encode it, and then that will help you uh, with your audio sync issues. Done an optimized video, you have a few more settings that you could mess with if you wanted to. I generally don't. A handbrake does a really good job of compressing um, without messing with these, but um, it's worth talking about anyways. So I might bump this up to slow. Um, slow means that it's going to spend a little bit more time on the encode and try to maybe make it a little bit more higher quality. Down under encoder tune, you have some options for uh, different sort of tuning things, like if it's uh, film versus animation, um, stuff like that. I haven't really seen a huge uh, benefit in playing with these, so I generally just leave it at, uh, at none. You can leave all this stuff on its own. This is sort of auto set by some other settings, so it's all good. Let's go over to audio. This is the audio track that it found in the video that you're trying to encode. If you click on the thing here, you're gonna see the source, and then you're gonna see what it's turning it into. AAC is the correct codec for YouTube and Vimeo. And then it's gonna have bitrate and 320 is fantastic. And then stereo. All this, you don't have to touch. It's gonna to be fine. It's gonna be good. If you have a subtitle track, it will show up here. Um, or you can uh, import subtitles from an SRT, SSA, or ASS file. So that's very useful if um, subtitles are part of your workflow. Chapters you won't need to worry about. Handbrake came out around the time that uh, DVDs were very popular and ripping DVDs were very popular. So this chapter setting here is sort of a, a vestige of that. So just in summary, we imported the video. We uh, chose the preset that was closest to the video that we had. We went into dimensions to make sure that our dimensions matched from the source to the output. We talked about if you needed to do denoising or sharpening or deblocking, you could do it in here. We made sure the frame rate was the same as our source frame rate, and we chose constant frame rate as opposed to variable frame rate. And we bumped our encoder preset up to slow from medium to give us just that a little bit more quality. In audio, we just checked to see that our audio track was there. We talked about being able to add subtitles and that chapters are not really gonna come into play in this particular situation. So with that said, we're gonna go down to here and hit browse. And we're going to pick where we want to put this video and we're gonna name it. I'm going to uh, name this. So in this case, this would be BMG Meet the Team, Alicia Handbrake for YouTube. Um, and then I generally put the date. So today is 04 2020. I like to have pretty verbose file names uh, to keep organized with what I'm doing so that um, I know what date something was created and where it's supposed to go um, in terms of the delivery platform. So putting YouTube in there helps me know that. So then I'll hit save. And then all you gotta do is hit start and code. So now Handbrake is going to go and encode this video for us. You can watch the pass down here. Kind of just hang out and wait for that to finish up. Okay, Handbrake has finished recording the video. Um, if we go over to our folder where we recorded this stuff, you're going to see the file that we recorded right here and uh, opening it up in something like VLC or your uh, media player of choice will uh, open it up. 
If you plan on recording all of your videos for, um, like say your class or your seminar or for whatever you're doing um, in the same manner and you know they're gonna have the same settings, once you've gone through what we just did, um, you can save that preset as something that you can access later. Here you can see that it says Vimeo YouTube HQ 1080p modified. And we can go and we can double check that our settings are the same as um, what we had set for that previous video. Indeed they are, Handbrake remembered. So I'm gonna go up here and hit save new preset. I'm gonna call this YouTube 1080 um, source frame rate and uh, you know you can do a description if you want and it's going to go into custom presets you can add a new category of presets if you want so let's just do that because we can we'll call this um, my presets um, dimensions now here's an option you can um, always choose to use the source resolution if you want if, again, if you know that you're gonna always be uh, recording at the same thing and you're outputting at the same thing, then this is an option. There are a lot of audio options um, in terms of choosing default languages and um, passing through the audio if it's a certain codec, um, but you can see down here that this is that uh, that setting that we, that we wanted, so that's fine. And then again, you can um, set up some default subtitle behavior if you are planning on using subtitles. So if I hit add, and then I go up to my presets. You can see that my presets was created and I can choose that preset for all of my needs. So what if I wanted to do a whole bunch of files? Well, you can do that too. If I go to open source and I hit folder batch scan, I'm gonna hit this and I'm gonna go into the folder that we pulled the original uh, encode from because it has like seven videos in it. I've selected the folder that I want. I'm gonna hit select folder and you can see that it's going through and scanning through the folder and picking up all the video files that are in there. So if you've done like a series of videos for let's say your class or a seminar or something like that, then um, you have the option of having it encode all of these at once. So the way that you know it works is if you go up to title, you can see that these are all the files that were in that folder. So um, I'm gonna choose that preset that we made. I'm gonna say add to queue. I'm gonna go down to title two, same thing, add to queue and just repeat this. And then I'm gonna go to my queue and you can see that it has added all of these files, which is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, hit start queue. Now it's gonna go through and it's going to encode all of those files for us. So that's pretty cool. We don't need to sit here and watch this finish up. You can also close the queue and it will continue in the back. You've always wanted to see what's going on you can hit q again and you'll be back in the queue to see what the progress of that queue is that's a little uh walkthrough on how to use handbrake to get your files ready for youtube or vimeo or another streaming website or platform that you are planning on sharing videos on um, i hope in these weird times um, especially those that are trying to teach and educate uh, find this useful in getting their files to their uh, students and uh, other people. If you're interested in learning how to make higher quality videos from your home, uh, we have an in-depth article on how to record high quality video from home, which includes tips about camera placement, your best backgrounds, um, equipment recommendations, and that's gonna be linked in the video description. So check that out and uh, hopefully it's useful to you. If you liked this video, uh, give it a like and subscribe to the Creative Toolkit for Marketers for more information. Check out our learning portal at BMG Studios. Thanks for watching and keep creating.